Well, um, I went live earlier and did night prayer. This is John Ruffle, Coffee Time Talks. And, um, but then later I realized that we've got another Welsh saint being celebrated today. And that is Saint Defrif, or Dubricus as he's known in English. And here we have another of these early Celtic Welsh saints. He was born around 465 and died in 550 AD. So um, I really can't resist talking about this a little bit because he's an amazing guy. He founded a monastery near Ross on Wye, which is on the Welsh borderland in the southern part of Wales. It's actually in Hereford. Um, and I'm going to relate a little story because when I was a teenager, my brother and I used to go cycling every summer on cycling holidays. And the first year we cycled to Wales, we cycled all the way to Wales and stayed in youth hostels. I remember we passed by this church near Ross on Wye and um, we thought, hey, wouldn't it be great to go inside and look at this church and perhaps pray? And so my brother and I went and we'd always try the doors of the church, it was locked up. So me not being deterred, went around the side where there was some singing nettles and brambles and made my way through the singing nettles and brambles and I said to my brother, I turned the knob of the, the big handle of the door and it began to open. I said, Peter, the door's unlocked, we can get in here. And so Peter followed me and we pushed the door open and as we did, there was one almighty crash echoing through the whole church. And uh, we were absolutely terrified, we didn't know what we'd done, but we'd destroyed this ancient church. It wasn't but a couple of minutes before the priest came running out to see what had happened. First, of course, he thought we were thieves or something breaking. We said, we just wanted to look at your beautiful church. We don't know what's happened. He said, okay, let's have a look. So he, he opened the door and there was a screen, a huge wooden screen behind the door and it had fallen flat and it had missed the altar rail and the fittings of the church literally by just an inch or two. And so he got to see the church and all was well. Um, but I say that because that was right where, right near where St. Diffrif would have, would have established a monastery back in the 6th century. So this is just, you know, just an amazing thing. I've always loved Wales and the spirituality of Wales. It is something that's so amazing. And it's thought that that Dubricus or Saint Diffrid, however you want to call him, that he's the one that anointed King Arthur to be king. Now we've mentioned King Arthur a few days ago. It's going to be up there if you want to explore it a bit. Talk about conspiracy theories. I don't know where we're going to go from that one, but bless him. I believe King Arthur was a real person. Uh, if you can un unwrap all the mythology surrounding him. Um, but now the interesting thing, and I want to close with this, it's very, very interesting because Dobricus ended up, he anointed David, Saint David, who of course is the patron saint of Wales, and he resigned his bishopric in favour of David um, at St. David, the cathedral down there. And then he isolated himself on the Isle of Bardsey, Bardsey Island, which is a very northwestern part of Wales in Great Britain. And it's interesting because I happen to be descended from uh, people that lived on Bardsey Island. And so I've always had this great affinity to Bardsey Island. And the strange thing is, I've never yet visited it, but it's called the Island of a Thousand Saints. Um, and 
the Welsh poets used to call it the land of indulgences, absolution and pardon, the road to heaven and the gate to paradise. And so it's always been very close to my heart, this wonderful tiny island is only one mile long and less than a mile wide and it's actually got an apple tree on it the sole surviving apple tree from the monastery back way back in the sixth seventh century something like that and it's it's now been grafted so that you can actually plant this apple tree yourself there was one survivor in the whole world and it's said to be the only apple variety that is completely resistant to disease. And back then in the land of the saints in Wales, across Wales, there were remarkable miracles taking place throughout this period of time of the, the period, the time of the saints. So let's just take courage and, you know, we can get so wrapped up in what's happening on the political front, on the pandemic front, uh, European Union, everything else. But if we just take a moment and still ourselves and remember that Britain has an amazingly rich heritage, spiritual heritage, Wales in particular has got a richness of its spirituality, of its Christian foundations founded on the love of Jesus Christ, founded on men and women who committed their lives to the love and for the service of the Lord and taught and preached and ministered and sacrifice themselves for the sake of everyone who, every one of us who's still here in Britain. So Heavenly Father, as we close out this day, we thank you for Saint Dubricas and for his dedication and for all the saints of Wales. And we bless you for them and we implore their intercession as together we raise our voices in thanksgiving for this wonderful land and may the blessing spread out around the world even as it did during the Welsh revival of the beginning part of the 20th century. Your faith is still alive and vibrating in our hearts, living in our hearts and in the hearts of those who have been watching me on this video today. Thank you so much. This is John Ruffle, Coffee Time Talks and it's a privilege and a blessing to share with you about the Welsh Saints yet again here tonight. <laughs>